Hey there, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for checking out today's video where I'm going to be setting up my weekly spread and having some fun with a project management layout and also including some botanicals for some nice visuals this week. For materials, I need a pencil. I'm also going to be using the O2 size multi-liner here from Mr. Pen. Also pulling out the Archer and Olive acrylographs from the March subscription box. Also have my rulers here so we can draw some of our straight lines. So for this week, what I'm going to do is set up space on the left hand side. That's where all of my main project information is going to go. I'm also going to have some space over here to draw out some of those botanical shapes. And then over on the right hand side, I'm going to break this out into a three column grid for my rapid logging and also carry over some of those botanicals. So to get myself started, I've already sketched in some of the botanicals here on the page. I've been on a little bit of a botanical obsession over the past few weeks, so everything I've been drawing for the most part has been botanical themed. I've been trying to really get a grasp on these shapes and these lines and carrying them over where I can. On both sides of the spread, I went with this three column grid that we have right here. And the reason that I'm using this is because it makes it really easy to split this up and I don't have to do too much counting on both sides, but I can still use this space for some of the extra creative elements. So the first thing I did was just space everything out. It's 11 across the top with two spaces in between. And then what I wanted to do was just to split the left hand page into two. So I can go back, figure that's 18 spaces with one in between and break that up into this column grid here. Because I only have four main projects that I'm working on, I left these bottom two column spaces here for the botanical patterns I have. And then over on the right hand side, I included some of those where I'll do the daily logs. The first thing I'll do is use this black mild liner here to put in the lines. And then I'm going to use this acrylograph pen to fill in all of the sketches where I've already penciled them in. If you haven't used acrylographs before, I'll go over real quick what these are and how to use them as we get up and running. If you're interested in picking up any of the acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive, don't forget you can use my discount code MENHUBULLET10, and they also sell some of their pens individually as well too, so you can check those out. So first thing we'll do is go ahead and fill in all of the lines on the left. I'll also include the lines over on the right hand side to give myself the space I need. Now the reason that I bought some new rulers, and I'll link these down below, they're super inexpensive, is because when I was using this 8x8 and I needed to draw a long line, I was moving my ruler down and sometimes I would just mess up or be a little bit off. So I thought, Mark, why are you doing this to yourself? Just buy a cheap clear ruler and you'll be good. So this came as a two-pack, uh, super helpful for smaller lines, and then when I need to pull in the larger one, I can just bring it over and use it. I don't know why it took me this long to just figure that out for myself. Now that all of my lines on the left hand side are all filled up, I'm going to go ahead and color in all of these botanical patterns that I have on the page. So to do that, I'm going to be using my Archer and Olive acrylograph pens. If you're not familiar with these pens, these are really cool paint pens from Archer and Olive that come in two different sizes. They come in a 0.7 or a 3 millimeter. If you're interested in either of those, you can check them out on Archer and Olive's website. But what's cool is that you just shake these up, probably about for a minute or two, make sure they're really good. And then I'll just show you real quick how to use these. So if you're using your pen and it's not already activated, you'll just press that down until the ink starts to flow out of the tip. If you've already activated your pen, you just wanna make sure that you're getting all that ink out first. It should be very opaque, so you shouldn't be able to really see through it with any of these colors. So that's how you know it's ready to go. So I've shaken this up, I've tested it out on the spare sheet of paper, and now I'm ready to go. All I'm going to do on these is just draw over the pencil that I already have. Because these paint pens are so opaque, you should not be able to see the pencil underneath of it. If you're not confident with drawing with pen or drawing with these paint pens, for instance, first, pencil is a great way to go. I've been really fascinated recently with floras or botanicals just because I'm not an awesome drawer. I, I just can't do the in-depth detail. So drawing leaves and straight lines or small circles has actually been really cool for me and I'm having so much fun doing it. These simple line drawings look really nice on paper. I think they look great just with black ink if you want to or your pen. It's nothing too detailed, but some of the leaves and some of the patterns that you can include look really nice. The best way to get inspiration, of course, is just to look online. Just type in botanical line drawings or floral line drawings. You'll find a plethora of different type of doodles or other examples out there that you can try for yourself. 
and this is in no way sponsored, but I did recently get a really cool book from Peggy Dean called Botanical Line Drawing, and it goes through like 200 different flowers and cactuses and leaves. I'll go ahead and link that in the descriptions below if it's something that you want to check out for yourself to learn how to draw botanicals. It's been really helpful for me and makes me feel really confident about what I'm doing. Now that I've got this all filled out on the left, let's go ahead and work on the right hand side. I do have all of my columns already penciled in so I knew where those were going to be. So I just drew a few down the little gutters that are here just to take up some good space, but to carry that pattern over from the left hand side. Now that we've gone over all of the lines on our spread with the acrylic graph, I'm going to go ahead and just draw on the lines on the right hand side to fill that in. Now the reason that I did the drawings first before the lines is I just wanted to make sure that I was given enough space that I didn't draw over those accidentally with the black marker. Before I get started with this, I want to make sure that the acrylograph paint is dry first, otherwise I could potentially smear it, which I've done before with the rulers when I'm drawing these lines. Now as I'm going over these, I am going to leave just a little bit of space so it's not going exactly right behind those florals, but kind of close. And then over on the left hand side real quick, I'll just draw in one space down from the top for each of the headers where I'll put the days of the week. One of the things I've been trying to do on some of those doodle pages I showed you is trying to find ways to fill in space in between these botanical drawings because there's just a certain element like filling in the page or just trying to have it be kind of nice. So I've learned kind of a few different techniques and I wanted to share them with you. The first is just drawing three circles by each other. And what I've been doing is just three dots on the page and just filling in spaces around where the other botanicals are. Visually, I really like the way it looks. It looks kind of fun without overdoing it and still continues to let those botanicals stand out. The other thing you can do if you want to add in between each of those little three dots are little stars. You could do this with two lines or three lines or if you actually wanted to draw a star shape, it's really easy to do. And I'm just going to space them out around this page here. You don't want them too close to each other. You can do them on opposite sides of the little three dots around as you go and just use that. And anywhere you feel like it's missing anything, you can just add a few more in if you want a few stars here or there, add in some three dots if you feel like it needs to. And to carry this over to the other side, I'll just do the same thing. I'll draw a few of the three dots and just add a star in here and there, and it'll kind of fill out the rest of that page. Now that I've got everything drawn in, the rest that I have to do really is just filling out this page. I'm going to put the titles of each of those four main projects on the left. And then over on the right hand side, that is where I'm going to do all of my daily logging. So I'll go ahead and set this up, just put in the first day of the week for Monday, and then I'll be ready to go with all of the notes and tasks that I have on that day. And then when I'm done, I'll just write in Tuesday and I'll keep going along. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. I hope this is a good inspirational page for you to maybe try out for yourself. If you're looking for something that can help with project planning and rapid logging and mixing those things together, as well as trying to include some botanical designs inside of your pages as well. I have new videos for you every week showing off different types of stationery, as well as other bullet journal tips and designs. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you very soon. See ya.